Yeah, it wasn't the energy, you know, in the building. It was the lack of energy on our part. You know, we, I thought we spent, uh, you know, a lot of our emotion, a lot of our passion in the two overtimes against St. A's, and, and we really didn't recover. And, uh, and again, you know, it was a game that uh, you're supposed to win, but nobody's easy in our league as evidenced by, you know, what happened in the first half. And I thought the second half we, we made some shots, picked up our, our defensive intensity, and we held them, uh, you know, from going to the, to the basket off the, off the dribble like, you know, they were doing in the first half. Held them to 35% shooting in the first half, in which they led as by as many, many as nine. Then they shoot 50% in the second half. But like you said, I thought you felt like you guys kind of had more control. Obviously, you guys shoot 54% offensively. Kind of what was the difference there in the second half? Well, you know, like I said, I thought we made key stops. You know, when we finally took the lead, I thought, you know, we did a great job of, you know, keeping them to one shot where they were hurting us, you know, in the first half. And I thought, you know, we had two or three good possessions on offense where the ball was moving, the players were moving, and we got a couple easy baskets because they were really chasing, uh, uh, you know, all our top shooters, Chris and Rodney, and I thought uh, BJ did a great job of getting open and making a couple key threes for us. Yeah, big games from both Rodney uh, and BJ, and obviously Chris as well. How important at this stage of the season is it for your, your upperclassmen to be playing well? Well, the upperclassmen, you know, that's that's what they've done the last, you know, couple of years here. You know, winning the league championship three, three years ago, going to the elite eight, you know, last year, and uh, and uh, that's what you expect. If uh, if you get some fillers in you know, along with these guys, um, it's it's a plus. And I thought Adrian played a great game for us tonight, especially making free throws, you know, down the stretch. Your 600th career victory tonight, one of eight uh, coaches in Division II history to reach that feat. Other than you've been coaching a long time, I'm not going to let you off the hook that easy. What does it mean to you? You know, what it means, it's the same thing I said, you know, at 400, you know, 500. Uh, you re reflect back at all the great players, you know, we had in our program, all the great coaches, you know. A lot of these coaches have been around, you know, for, for many, many years. and. And the support from the community and the support, you know, we get here from the school and the administration. It makes my job a lot easier and I don't, I don't want to downplay, you know, the, the fact that, you know, uh, we have that number. But, you know, that's what you look at, you know, when you when you look at the uh, at the total wins. And again, nobody talks about the losses. <laughs> Only half as many of those. <laughs> Lastly. Two years ago, you beat AIC here in the same first round game. You went on to the quarterfinal round at Southern Connecticut where you lost. This time, same thing, you beat AIC here in the first round. You're now going to Southern Connecticut in the quarterfinal. What do you guys have to do there for the outcome to be different this time? Well, you know, we talked about it, you know, in the locker room. For our season to extend, you know, we need to pick off, you know, another team that's ahead of us. We did a good job the other night against St. A's. We got it a game out here tonight, and we got to go on somebody's turf. And, and take, you know, a game against, you know, either the best or second best team in the region. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.